Jesus and St. Joseph. We're here in, uh, in Kentucky here for the seminary. We have today the, the first tonsure and the, also the taking of the vows. Because today would be the normal day in which our fifth year seminarians would have been ordained subdeacons. But uh, since we don't have a bishop, <clears throat> Uh, they're not able to do the ordination of the subdiaconate, so as the rector of the seminary to the installing them as clerics, <clears throat> to receiving the clerical tonsure, and then they take the, they take the vow of celibacy for the remainder of their lives and the vow to say the breviary uh, each day from now until their death, and that vow is taken in the same manner <clears throat> that the subdeacon takes it, which is before the ceremony begins, the subdeacon takes one step forward. And and we take that step, saying no words, takes a vow of celibacy and to say the bravery, and the obligation of the subdeacon. Also, the, the, uh, the, since we're not able to have the actual ceremony of the ordination of the subdiaconate, <clears throat> after the uh, sermon here, we'll have the profession of the vows, uh, the vow of uh, celibacy and of saying the bravery each day for the rest of their lives. <clears throat> we shall make in front of the Blessed Sacrament before the witnesses of myself and Father Pongrass, as witnesses of the church. And then, because uh, they're here for the church to profess our faith and to spread that faith, and that, uh, you know, so that this, that the priests are needed, <clears throat> and that in our late inner time will provide us with the bishop to be able to fill in the ceremony of the, con of the ordination of the subdiaconate, later on the diaconate and the priesthood. And today is a day <clears throat> also that this uh, feast of St. Joseph, in which many of us in the society received our subdiaconate. Uh, and uh, you know, and so that uh, I was ordained subdeacon on this day also, uh, and that uh, so in any case, this is a, one of the one of the days in which we frequently do the sacrament and this vow for life of the of celibacy and of Saint Gregory. The epistle for this feast of Saint Joseph is taken from the Book of Wisdom, uh, chapter forty-five. Beloved of God and men whose memory is in benediction. He made him like the saints in glory, and magnified him in the fear of his enemies. And with his words he made prodigies to cease. He glorified him in the sight of kings, and gave him commandments in the sight of, the, of, of his people, and showed him his glory. He sanctified him in his faith and meekness, and chose him out of all flesh. For he, had, for he heard him and his voice, and brought him into a cloud. And he gave him commandment before his face, and a law of life and instruction. And in the Gospel, take that according to St. Matthew chapter 1. When Mary, the mother of Jesus, was espoused to Joseph before they came together, she was found with child and of the Holy Ghost. Whereupon Joseph, her husband, being a just man, and not willing publicly to expose her, was minded to put her away privately. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in his sleep, saying, Joseph, son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sins. Thus for the words of today's holy message. And the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, Amen. We're in this <coughs> sacred season of Lent, and the great feast of Saint Joseph. <coughs> And remember that St. Joseph's time of greatness <clears throat> was in the time of great difficulty. And Joseph of the Old Testament <clears throat> had to save the, his brothers and to save the whole entirety of the church by going into the land of Egypt. And he was saved indirectly by the hand of his fellow priests. Part of the mystery of Joseph that he is one of the twelve sons Twelve bishops of the church. And who are the ones that threatened him? And who are the ones that decided that he must die? Who are the ones who did not believe 
that said he is a somniator, that he is a dreamer. And as he walked out to see them in Dotaim, where they were not supposed to be, they said, Behold, the dreamer cometh. Let us kill him and see what availeth him of his dreams. They didn't know what they were saying. Just like those priests on Good Friday who decided to bring about the death of our Lord Jesus Christ. He said he preached, he saved others, himself he cannot save. And they did not know that he did not need to be saved. And that he was not here to save himself, but to save others. And the others to be saved are not only those individuals that are weeping, such as the holy women at the foot of the cross, not only those who were standing at a distance, weeping and repentant, but those who were going to pierce his side with the utmost of hatred, and those who rejected him completely, his own people, he will see a happy conclusion of all things. Let us see what his dream shall avail him. There are dreamers, there are those that do not believe in dreams, there are those that want to kill dreams. But what is it that is going to win the day? It is dreamers. And who are the ones who are going to be the instruments to bring about that victory? It is the killers of dreams. There are wicked men now making laws throughout our country and throughout the world. 134 cases of the coronavirus in India out of only 1 billion and 100 million people. And they want to shut the country down. Terrified of a virus that is basically like the common cold. Because it might, maybe, affect our health. And this is the foolishness they feed the people. But what about the leaders? They want to kill dreams. Many people are afraid today that they're trying to kill the American dream. The American dream was dead from the beginning. They think they're trying to kill the American dream of freedom. We won't be able to travel between states anymore. Not able to assemble and pray to God anymore. Mm -hmm. Only gather in spite of the Walmart in large numbers to buy toilet paper. Mm -hmm. But won't be allowed to gather in large numbers to praise God. The trouble with toilet paper is it's flammable. Mm -hmm. We need to gather together as something, something a little more deeply than toilet paper. Something better than cleaning supplies for your hands. Is that the dream? There are men in the world who want to kill the dream of our Holy Roman Catholic faith. They want to destroy it. They want it dead everywhere in the world. Because this faith saves souls. This faith saves families. It saves cities. It saves countries. It saves rationality and sanity. It saves everything. It is that faith that saves. Remember one time, a newly ordained priest, there was a dog dying of stage five cancer. The dog was dying. He said, Father, anoint the dog. Well, I can't really anoint the dog, but I'll give him a doggy sick blessing. So I gave him a doggy sick blessing, and he started becoming happy. Dog lived longer. Dog ran around barking, and he was happy for a while. When I saw up doggy cancer, you get a blessing from the priest. The crops, get a blessing from the priest. I remember we had a big famine here in the 1970s, a big famine. 
and there was no rain. He said, Father Hannafin, say a mass for rain. He said a mass for rain, and we had the biggest flood that ever happened in the decade. We got rain. But the fact is, the answer of rain, the answer of drought, the answer of sick doggies, the answer of health, the answer to every trouble is found in the priest of God. But not the priest who acts like unto Caiaphas, or the priest that acts like Judah did in the scripture reading last week. Judah, the great grandfather of our Lord Jesus Christ. Not the priest that acts like Levi did. Levi, the father of all priests. Anyone who is called priest is called a Levite. But what happened when Joseph the priest, by the command of his father, went to check on the sheep? He went to check on the sheep, and Levi said, the, the dreamer comes, kill him. That's what the father of all priests said. And Judah, the grandfather of our Lord Jesus Christ, the grandfather of the Blessed Virgin Mary and of St. Joseph, who would later be guilty of the sin of adultery, and in this manner bring a child in the world. That Judah. And God chose to be the blessed tribe. What did he say when he saw Joseph? Kill him. He wanted him dead also. And when they went to kill him, Judah then had a little bit of feeling of remorse in his heart. And then he said, let us not directly kill him. But let us sell him into slavery. That was Judah's idea. He wanted him dead. But then he was worried not about Joseph. He was not worried about Isaac or Jacob. He was worried about his own feelings. He was exceedingly selfish. He says, you know what, if I murder my own brother, whom I hate, whom I want dead, whom I despise, I'll have blood on my hands, and I don't want blood on my hands. So let's just get rid of him. Let's find a balanced solution, a compromised solution. The masters of compromise are called the priests and bishops of the church. And he was the grandfather of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Whom does God choose? Why does God choose such men? There comes Joseph the priest. Joseph who has come to see how things are going. Joseph who is innocent. Joseph who believes in the word of his father and is obedient. And Joseph who believes in the dreams that came from heaven. And Joseph who was honest and told his brothers about these holy dreams. They wanted him dead. Who wanted him dead? The bishops of the church. The priests of the church. That's who wanted him dead. Only one was good, and that was Benjamin, and he was at home with mommy. He wasn't doing anything. The good one was at home with mommy. The bad ones were out taking care of the sheep in the wrong place. And they all agreed that they wanted to get rid of their brothers, their brother Joseph. Judah wanted to kill him, but at the last minute he decided that he would sell him into slavery. Reuben wanted to save him. He was a nice one. But he would not be blessed. Isaac preferred Judah over Reuben, though Reuben was older than Judah. And Reuben should have been the grandfather of our Lord Jesus Christ. But it isn't what happens. What is happening right now in 2020? God is looking at our souls. He's looking at the souls everywhere in the world. And some souls he sees, this one I shall bless. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. 
Abraham, great faith. Isaac, great fidelity and great fortitude. Jacob, though he started off a deceiver, he was very wise, and he became brave eventually. But Judah, Judah would receive all the blessings of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, but he would never become great. But God would bless Judah, and from him would come the chosen tribe. From him would come the Messiah. And his children, in the greater fight that would come later, they would be more faithful than the other tribes. God knows what he wants. He chooses the weak to confound the strong. He chooses the foolish. He chooses whom he wills. And when we look at the sacred scripture, we see that we don't understand the choices of God. But one thing for sure, he wants there to be faith. That's why he makes so many of these strange choices. He also makes sure that Joseph is the one who will save. And how will he save? It will be at the hands of the priest. Because of the envy and the hatred of his brothers, the priests... Because of that envy and hatred, what happened? The Jewish people were saved. The priests today and the wicked bishops today, who are thinking only themselves, who are compromisers, the good ones, who are very wicked, the bad ones, and they all hate whichever one stands for the truth, whichever one is a somniator, they will always hate. And yet, each of them shall be an instrument of the salvation of souls. As the Lord Jesus Christ says, it is necessary that the Son of Man go to that cross. And he is the priest and the victim. Who was responsible for bringing him to the cross? It was not the Romans. And it was not the people. It was the priest of God. The priest was responsible. And who is responsible for the crisis in the church today? It is the priest. Now all men are guilty, but if the priests did their duty and everyone else was guilty, there would be no crisis in the church. Just like the fathers of the church tell us, 100% of the followers of Adam went bad. 100% turned to maliciousness. And that Eve, who was 100% of humanity outside of Adam, she came to Adam and she said, Eat of the forbidden fruit. And she tried to bring him to evil. But if he did not sin, her children, her daughters, and her sons would not be stained with sin. It wouldn't have happened. She would have had to do some kind of penance for her maliciousness. And she did for 900 years, penance. And she's now in the kingdom of heaven. She would have to do some kind of penance for her maliciousness, but it would be only personal and it would not affect the world. And what is it that is said to Joseph in his dream? Saint Joseph, do not fear to take Mary thy wife, for the child is of, it is in her is of the Holy Ghost, and this child is going to save the people from their sins. The priest of God is designed to save people from their sins. That's what the priest of God is designed for. And if the priest fails, the whole world fails. Just like when Nadab and Abihu were required by God to hold up the arms of Moses. What is the trouble today? The Holy Father is in hiding now. No one wants to go out. The instruction used to be, if there is a pandemic, if there is an epidemic, a real one, and people are dying, who's supposed to be in the middle of those dying people? It is the priest of God. He is the one that goes where they are and gives them the sacraments. He is the one that goes where they are and takes care of them until their death. And he is there until it is over or until he is dead with them. What is the spirit of the priest of God today? It is gone. They are ordained. 
They know how to give rules and regulations. They know how to keep themselves safe. They know the rules of the modern security forces, the modern firemen, and the modern policemen who say we will protect the people by first protecting ourselves. That's how you protect the people. Because if you don't protect yourself, you can't protect the people. So you first protect yourself. And if you're safe, then you make sure that people are also safe. But if you can't keep your firemen safe, well, then you don't worry about the people dying in the building. You do what you can, as long as you keep your guys safe. A soldier is not for the safety of soldiers. A fireman is not for the safety of firemen. A policeman is not for the safety of policemen. The soldier is for the safety of the country. The fireman is for the safety of the sick and those dying in burning bill houses. The policeman is for the safety of the citizens. And not for themselves. Why are they being wicked? They're just imitating the priests. That's all. What the priest does, they are also doing. We are in a sacred battle. And it's a battle of the holy priesthood. It is a battle of the holy priesthood. And there came, there came Joseph and they said, Let us see what his dreams shall avail him. What we have seen. His dreams brought him to Egypt. His dreams made him the second man in the power of the, in, the, in the land of Egypt. His dreams made it possible for the, enough food not only to save the Egyptians but all, and, and, the, and the Jews, but to save everyone that came. There was so much food that was repaired during those seven years of plenty by Joseph and his wisdom. He who shall increase, the meaning of the word Joseph. He increased so much that anyone that came, there was enough food to feed all. And more came, and, and there was no more food than there was needed, th those that could come and eat it. And there's more grace in heaven. There's more love in God. There's more faith in our holy church. There's more truth that can ever be eaten up, that can ever be swallowed up, that can ever be given out to no, an infinite number of needy souls. But in any case, here we are, forming priests. Only we have the usual mockery. Where's your bishop? Blessed Virgin will provide us a bishop. A boy can be ordained a priest when he is a baby. You get baptized, you can be ordained a priest. You can be an atheist and be ordained a priest. And a really good recommendation is thieves like becoming priests. You could be a thief and become a priest. Judas did well. You don't have to know anything to be a priest. All you have to be is a baptized male and somebody puts hands on your head. Adam Weissop became a priest. Adam Weissop was a Jew who decided that he wanted to become a Jesuit. So he became a Jesuit. He was ordained a priest. Now why was he ordained a priest? So that he could leave the Holy Roman Catholic Church that he lied his way into. He could leave the Jesuits that he lied his way into to receive the sacrament of the priesthood so that as a priest he could found the Illuminati. He didn't only want to be evil, he wanted to be the maximum evil and there's no more evil man on earth than a priest. And our Lord Jesus Christ made it most very clear when he said, Pilate, you're bad. Herod, I won't even talk to him. He is also bad. But the greater sin is in Caiaphas, the priest. The greater sin is in he who handed, him over, handed me over to you. That is the greater sin. The greater sin is always going to be found in the priest. It will not be found somewhere else. So what must be done? This is why the subdiaconate is such a beautiful thing, the subdiaconate that we could not have today. What is the duty of a subdeacon? Laundry. That's his job. Deacons get to wait the tables. Waiters, when they wait the table, they can always grab some food. Bring out 12 desserts, only love them make it to the table. 
The waiter can, the waiter can always make care of things. But what's the, the subdeacon? He's the guy that washes the dishes. He's the one that does the laundry. That's his duty. His duty is to make things clean. And in order to make things clean, he's going to touch the linens that are on the altar, that touch the chalice. He must be pure. The purity and innocence is the first step of major orders. And priests forget this. One of the very wicked things they did before Vatican II, they first said, against St. Thomas Aquinas, subdiaconate is not really a major order. It's only major because of the vow that the young men take. Because of the step that they make. But it's not really a major order. We call it major orders. We've called it major orders now for over a thousand years. And St. Thomas Aquinas tells us it is a part of the holy priesthood. We had the first priest step today in the tonsure. All the ceremonies take place during Mass. Tonsure is instituted by the Church and not by Christ. A priest can administer tonsure. A abbot by the superior seminary can administer tonsure. A simple priest can administer tonsure. Though normally the bishop doesn't. Tonsure is the institution of the Church. But St. Thomas tells us the other seven orders were instituted by Christ. And modern theologians say, not really the minor orders were just instituted by the church to show the dignity of what a deacon does. And the subdeacon, maybe he's part of major orders, maybe he's not, we're not sure. And then when Vatican II came, they dropped the subdeacon. And that was very important to drop the subdeacon, because he stands for purity. And purity cannot be tolerated in a world that is filled with Satan. Purity is essential. Why is it? What's the real reason why those bishops hated Joseph? Because he was pure and he was innocent. He was naive and innocent. And the innocent boy came across the field at the age of 16. He left his home at the age of 16. Think he'd be back in a matter of a month. He would not return until he was over 40 years old. He was gone for a long time. In fact, he would not return until he was dead and his body will be brought back. He would not see his family until he was 47 years old or around 45 years old during those seven years of famine. He was going for a short walk. Turned out to be a very long one. But what happened during that long walk of Joseph? Wicked priests were still used an instrument of God. Remember when Caiaphas stood up and said, Why do you fools? Do you not understand that one man must die for the people? And he said it with a wicked heart. He said it with pure maliciousness. And he said it because he cared only for himself. And he said it to justify the murder of Christ. That was in the heart of Caiaphas. But what did the Holy Ghost say about it? He did not say these words because he was wicked. Because wicked hearts are a dime a dozen. Buy one, get one free. His heart was wicked like so many other men. Nothing special there. But he was the high priest that year. And therefore the Holy Ghost allowed him to still speak the truth even though he was filled with the greatest wickedness and spoke the truth with a malicious intention. So likewise, these bishops were speaking the truth. And they said, Look at the dreamer, behold he cometh. See what his dreams shall avail him. His dreams shall avail him victory. His dreams shall avail him glory. His dreams shall avail every one of their prophecies to be taken true. And the bishops are going to see to it that it happens. What will be the circumstances in which the Pope, whether it be the present Pope Francis or the following Pope, will actually obey heaven. Is it going to be because they're going to become saints? Maybe women. Maybe laymen. Not priests. Our Lord said, How do you fix salt when the salt loses its savor? And so it was that Caiaphas said the truth. The truth did not save him. 
most likely Caiaphas now is in the kingdom of hell. And many priests say the truth, and the truth does not save them. Because they forget what is the foundation of the holy priesthood. It is the mystery of the subdiaconant, which is purity, 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 and innocence. The priest is supposed to carry an innocent heart. He's supposed to carry a pure heart. And what do the old, the old book of canon law say, which even modern society priests and modern fraternity of St. Peter priests and modern priests don't agree with 2,000 years of the church's teaching. They think our Lord Jesus Christ doesn't know what he's talking about. <coughs> they don't agree with the Code of Canon Law in 1917. And what does it say in the Code of Canon Law in 1917? It says a priest must take a young man at a very young age when he's a teenager, or when at latest when he just gets out of high school, take a man at a very young age before he is destroyed by the contagion of the world. What do the modern what do the modern priests say? One priest used to say it. One bishop was supposed to be our bishop. We are here without a bishop. A few days ago, birthday bash. 80 year old celebration. Big party. Cake in England. There are more things in thy philosophy. There are more things on earth, Horatio. A very good word right on the cake. There are more things in the earth ratio than are dreamt of in thy philosophy. They're having parties in England. Or the bishops are supposed to help us. They're hiding out in bunkers. They're celebrating. We need soldiers in the battlefield who are going to go after souls. We don't need parties. What about that soviator? What about that dreamer? He did dream. And his dreams did avail him the salvation of the whole church. You know how big the church was when they went to Egypt? 72 persons. 72 in the entire church. Catholic Church. And 12 the fathers of the whole Catholic Church, sons of Jacob, they did not have the most of them the love of God in their hearts. But God blessed them anyway, and He only saved them through the Somniator. And he only saved them through innocence and purity. And the modern church hates it. And hence they drop the subdiaconate. And what do the modern priests and modern bishops say, including bishops of the size of the and priests of the size of the same of the They say a man should first be experienced in the world before he comes to the seminary. He should have a little experience. He should know a little bit about impurity. He should know a little bit about greed. He should know a little bit about murder. He should know a little bit about wickedness. I mean, when's the last time? Why would you go to a doctor? You mean you're a doctor and you never had cancer? How can you go to a doctor if you got the coronavirus? What do you know about the coronavirus? You're not infected. <coughs> I don't know to you, you're not infected. What do you mean there's no infection in this hospital? I'm not going to this hospital. I want to be infected. I want somebody who's infected. You go and get the virus. You go and start coughing, and I'll believe in you. I want to see some infection. And that's called wisdom today. But our Holy Mother of the Church says, take a young boy before he is infected, and keep him pure. Let him carry his innocence. Let him carry his belief in dreams. Because young men believe in dreams, and dreams are true. And what happens when they get older? The dreams don't stop being true. The young man stops believing in them. And he becomes wise with the wisdom of the world that destroys. A priest never grows old. He's always around the young. He never grows old because he maintains purity, he maintains innocence, 
He should always have a certain childlikeness about him. He should never become fully adult. Remember, as they say in the world even, the difference between a man and a boy is the price of his toys. That a man should never fully leave behind his boyhood. And a priest should never leave behind his innocence. In the modern world's world's view, what is it? Especially for us. Any young man gets ordained a subdeacon and takes a vow of celibacy. He's an idiot in the world. Well, what about us? Fools beyond fools. As St. Paul says, you are fools. You may say you're a fool, but I am more so. The young man goes to become a subdeacon with a modernist bishop to lay hands upon his head in a comfortable seminary with nice walls. Promise of a nice parish that he can be in when he gets ordained in a comfortable spot. We don't have any of those things. We only have the dream. That's all we have. And let us see which one wins the day. Those 12 bishops, the other 11, 10 bishops, Benjamin at home with mommy, those 10 bishops didn't believe. Not only did they not believe in Joseph's dream, they hated his dream. And his own father didn't understand. What is faith? To believe in things unseen. Even though we have seen the effects of our faith down 2,000 years, and we have seen the victory of our faith down 2,000 years, we know that our faith wins always. Christ will still put a situation where we can't see it win in our case. I want to do the right thing, but maybe now I'll make an adjustment. I want to do the right thing, but why don't we wait until tomorrow? Let's wait till the weather is better. Let's wait till the situation is better. No, God demands of us faith now. Five years in the seminary. Five years despised. Five years spit on. Five years mocked. That's a good preparation. And we're still idiots. But the fact is, if there is faith underneath, if there is a spirit of charity underneath, then God will not abandon us. Our Holy Mother will not abandon us. It will make sure that we are all well cared for and then we will go out to be able to care for souls. It is interesting that this very week when you're taking the promises, all of a sudden, so many churches are closing. Many people don't know when they're going to get their next Mass. Maybe it's time to go from house to house for everyone. This happens in the time of persecution. Maybe the time of persecution is around the corner. Maybe the time of peace is at an end. Maybe not. Only God knows. But no matter what time it is, we need faith. No matter what time it is, we must believe in the sacredness of the dreams that the faith has given to us. And we have to persevere <coughs> and ask the greats to persevere. Who's we had mortem, mortem mountain crucis. No greater blessing than our holy faith. We ask the Blessed Mother to protect us and to preserve us. And then we persevere in the fight. And as soon as she send us, the bishop will be able to help us. Because there are more things on earth. Horatio that are dreamt of in the philosophy of modern men. And these things are found in the dreams of St. Joseph, in the dreams of Joseph, in the dreams of all the saints. And these dreams shall come true, as they always have in the past, and always will. And the one that makes sure the dream comes true, the dream of our holy faith, and the victory over our enemies, the victory over the devil, is the Holy Mother of God, we must put one foot in front of the other. We must continue along our way. It takes five minutes to ordain a priest. It does not take five minutes to prepare one. And they must many years be without being an ordained priest. 
They can still go out and teach souls. They can still go out and teach catechism. They can still go out and prepare souls, lead them in the Sunday prayers. They can still prepare the dying. They can still put scapulars on those that are dying. They can still do the act of contrition. They can teach them to crucifix the crucifix. They can do many things. But there must be a heart to follow Christ and to be true servants of our Holy Mother of the Church and true Levites. When these three young men entered into the land, land of the Levites now, so many Levites are not faithful to God. But there will always be some. St. Roman says, yes, there are many bad priests, and there will always be many bad priests. And there are many bad faithful, and there will always be many bad faithful, and the whole hierarchy of the church. But God will never allow the whole thing to be corrupt. There will always be some good priests, always be some good Levites, always be some good faithful, all the way in some good bishops until the very ending of the world. God will provide even though sometimes it doesn't appear that way. And he will use all things, including our enemies, including the wickedness of the world around us, in order to make sure that his good purposes are accomplished and his good and his will can never be stopped. And our Holy Mother will make sure that it is her son's will is always accomplished. God bless you all. In the name of the Father and the Son, the Holy Ghost. Amen.